Hi, we are up to part three in comparing uh, SN1 versus uh, SN2. And uh, today we're going to start out with the effect of the type of alkyl halide, whether that alkyl halide is primary, secondary, or tertiary. Okay. Like I said, this is part three. Uh, parts one and two compare the stereochemistry, uh, the kinetics, um, what type of nucleophile you have, whether it's good or poor. <clears throat> Over here, we are going to discuss the type of alkyl halide. And the type of alkyl halide will affect um, the rate of the reaction. Now, with all things being equal, we're going to see that certain type of alkyl halides favor SN1 and other types favor SN2. And I want to put that disclaimer with all things being equal. We'll start with SN2. So with all things being equal, <clears throat> um, primary. Okay. They probably tend to go SN2. So in terms of the speed, if you're looking at SN2 processes, primary, is faster, faster than secondary, faster than tertiary. Now, uh, why is that the case? That's the case because in an SN2 process, right, the nucleophile attacks to kick out the leaving group. So it's logical that the less crowded your alkyl halide is, the easier it is for the nucleophile to attack. So this is based on what? This is based on crowdedness. Okay, and that's again uh, SM2. So that's your trend. Okay, we're going to try to memorize these trends and apply them when we look at reactions and try to predict whether a certain substitution reaction goes via SN1 or SN2. What about uh, SN1? It's actually the opposite. So again, our first example is SN2, but when we go to SN1, tertiary alkyl halides. tend to uh, follow SN1. What should you always think about when someone says it's going through an SN1 process? You should always think about that it goes through a carbocation. Okay. So the trend here SN1, tertiary, faster than secondary, faster than primary. Why? For SN2, it was based on crowdedness. For SN1, it's going to be based on stability of the carbocation. So here in purple, we're going to compare it with SN2, but for SN1, it's based on stability. Stability of the carbocation. Now, the thing about this is that we know other types of carbocations 
besides tertiary, secondary, and primary. We know allylic carbocations. There's something called benzylic carbocations, and those are really stable. So if we expand our universe to think of other um, types of carbocations, we have the allylic. So what would we call this one? Okay. That's allylic. And benzylic is if you have a benzene ring. And the carbocation is off the benzene ring. This is called the benzylic carbon. So we have allylic, but also you notice that this is tertiary. So this is tertiary allylic, and this one is tertiary benzylic. Benzylic, one L. Okay, those are the ones that are super super stable. They're even more stable than just a plain uh, tertiary. So here's my greater than symbol. Okay. And then we have plain tertiary. Okay. And what about the allylics? Well, your carbocation that's secondary can be pushed up to the stability of a tertiary carbocation if it's a secondary allylic. So, how do I want to draw this? Hmm. Kind of messed up there. Um, let's do this way. You see how that's secondary allylic? And just like we had tertiary allylic and tertiary benzylic, we'd have secondary benzylic. So the idea of having resonance helps a carbocation be more stable than what you would actually think, right? Because this is tertiary plane, it's the same stability as a secondary element. Same stability as a secondary benzyl. So you could play that game going down the line. The interesting thing about this is that now, if you have something that's primary, a primary carbocation, normally you would think that that will not go SN1. Okay, but if it's primary allylic or primary benzylic, okay, and you could challenge yourself by drawing an example. Can you draw an example of primary allylic and primary benzylic? Well, those can go S and 1. Now, that you could probably imagine or anticipate that we're going to have a lot of gray area. Okay, this is not black and white anymore because, you know, what happens if it's secondary? Look at our trends. You know, secondary is in the middle of an S and 2 trend, in the middle of an S and 1, so how do you pick? Well, we've already seen examples like that where we had a very good nucleophile versus a poor nucleophile. Again, you're going to have to look at the total patient. You're going to have to look at all the ailments or all the symptoms to try to diagnose what mechanism it's going to go through. Okay. So I'm done talking about those trends, the trends where we have alkyl halide effects. I'll just leave you here with uh, draw an example primary allylic and what primary benzylic okay, okay. the next thing is solvent effects <clears throat> Let me just look at my notes. Yep. So solvent effects is another parameter by which you can decide whether a substitution is going to go through a SN1 mechanism or SN2 mechanism. Okay, especially for those that are using secondary alkyl halides, because again, you are on the fence if you're secondary. If you're a primary, most, most, most likely you're going to undergo an SN2 reaction. And if you're tertiary, most, most likely you're going to do an SN1 reaction. Okay. There are some exceptions. And again, these are both substitutions. And you could always 
remind yourself of this cartoon, right? These are your two mechanisms. The top one is SN1, the bottom one is SN2, but look at the result for each of the two rows. They both result in the substitution reaction, where the orange tabby substitutes for the gray cat. Okay. Um, so if I take a look at my list, we are now doing solvent effects. And we should have time to put everything together. Summary. Okay. The solvent effects. This one's a, a little bit tricky. You are going to have to memorize or be able to interpret what kind of solvent a molecule is. So, water. Let's start out with a solvent that we all know about water. This water is polar. Okay. And I know it's not super acidic, but that hydrogen can be removed, and you know that water can act like an acid, and an acid donates a proton. So that term, a molecule that can donate a proton relatively easily, is called protic. When you have a solvent, you want to describe it two different ways, the polarity and whether it's protic or aprotic. Okay. Let me give you an example of an aprotic solvent. An aprotic solvent is something like acetone. Okay. And you may want to, a lot of professors expect you to know acetone off the top of your head. This is the simplest acetone, uh, simplest ketone. It's definitely polar because you have the partial positive and the partial negative atoms. So you have a dipole bond, polar, aprotic. Because you know that hydrogens off of a carbon are very hard to donate. They're not very acidic. They have a pKa of around 60. Uh, this one actually has a lower pKa because of the possible resonance when you deprotonate, but still this is considered aprotic. What is apolar? Or maybe we should call it nonpolar. Well, hexane. Okay. And then I know my class has looked at cyclohexane. Okay. This is definitely nonpolar. Uh, aprotic. It has to be aprotic. Again, all these hydrogens are on carbons, and they're very hard to donate. There is no such thing, I believe, as a nonpolar protic. Because if you have a acidic hydrogen, you are going to have a, a dipole bond. And if you have a dipole bond, you're not going to be nonpolar. So these are the main three. Let me, <clears throat> let me give away the answer, and then... I'll try to explain why uh, this happens. And uh, the conclusion is that polar A products typically favor SN1. Okay. We're going to have to, or we're going to try to rationalize that. The climax for this row is that polar A products favor SN2. I know we haven't done a lot of examples, but again, when you are on the fence between SN2 and SN1, and you're mainly looking at the type of alkyl halide, secondary in this case, you would have to have other parameters, other um, things to look at to decide which way the balance is going to tip. Are you going to tip more to the SN2 or tip more to the SN1? Well, if you have this on your mind, then you could use this as a tiebreaker. Um, in general, you're going to decide SN1 and SN2 using the type of alkyl halide, primary, secondary, or tertiary. And the other factors will be tiebreakers. The solvent effect, the type of nucleophile. Mm, the type of nucleophile actually is also super important. The, the solvent is going to be the tiebreaker for most cases. Before I explain why this occurs, let me uh, give you the list. So 
I think we're going to start out with SM2. So I'm going to list all the polar A products that you should be familiar with. Okay, remember, not protic. Doesn't donate a proton very easily. Acetone is common. And acetone can be drawn like this. On a exam, we might just write acetone underneath the arrow. Okay, literally just tell you that there's acetone solvent. Uh, dimethyl sulfoxide, DMSO. DMSO is this. There are other Lewis structures that represent DMSO, but I'm going to use this one where sulfur has four bonds. Okay. Dimethyl sulfoxide. Actually, the resonance makes more sense, I think, because now sulfur we'll have an octet rule, we'll follow the octet rule. Yeah, there you go. Mm, yep, that follows the octet. Alright, so either way, DMSO, uh, acetonitrile, CH3, CN. And acetonitrile, um, well, let me draw some of the Lewis structure. Because why is this polar? This is polar because your nitrogen is partial negative, rendering the carbon partial positive. You don't have to draw the lone pair, but I'll draw it here. Okay. Those are the three, maybe give it one more. Dimethylformamide. You gotta memorize four. Okay. Definitely a polar molecule. None of those hydrogens are very acidic. Polar A -pro. Again, we could put it here. SN2. Favors. If you have a tie with your type of alkyl halide and uh, the strength of the nucleophile, uh, look at SN2. Oh, sorry, look at the solvent to decide. Because if you have a polar protic, It's likely that you're going to switch over to the SN1. Polar product is easy. It's water. It's alcohol. Any type of alcohol. Methanol. Ethanol. Even isopropanol. Or 2-propanol. Okay, we haven't learned how to name at least my class yet. I said to learn how to name alcohols. Don't worry about that. Um, another polar product could be something like ammonia. Okay. Ammonia is usually gas, but you could um, compress it and make it a liquid. And I think um, those are the main ones. Maybe in the textbook they might use acetic acid. Do you notice that all of these are protic? All of these have a pKa maybe under, let's say, 40, okay, because the pKa of ammonia is 36. Um, now that I think about it, all of these have a pKa on the top row around 15. This one has a pKa of 5. Actually, let's get rid of this. This is not very protic. I don't think we're going to have any reactions that are run in liquid ammonia. Not at least in this substitution unit. Okay. Alright, so those are your um, different solvents that you would want to try to memorize, or you should memorize. Okay. Alright, solvent effects. So if you have a primary alkyl halide, like this, and uh, you use uh, nucleophile, a good nucleophile. Okay. I'm not going to give the solvent just yet. I'm going to give you some data in just a bit, but you're going to pause the video and draw the product of this substitution. Okay. So if it's a substitution, and again, we're only concentrating on substitution reactions, not 
Some of you may know elimination reactions, but we're not doing that. That is the next unit. All right? Come in, kick up the halide. It is primary. Okay, so it is it is most likely going to be SN2. Look at this data. Let me see if I can find it. Yep. In methanol. It takes 20 hours. But in acetone, it's sped up and it only takes 15 minutes. Okay. So for reactions that are SM2, do you see how acetone, which favors SM2, speeds up the reaction dramatically? Whereas methanol, which does not favor SN2, it will still happen, but it took uh, 20 hours. Okay, So, why is that the case? Normally when you have a nucleophile, you want to separate the two ions. So we need it polar to separate. That's the first step. To separate into Na+, uh, and Cn minus, okay. you know, side items like that. So that's great. But we need an a protic because if it's protic, that hydrogen, which is super partial positive, is going to complex this nucleophile and block it. So. I'm not going to say why we need an A protic. I'm going to say why we can't have it protic. We can't have protic solvents because uh, this would happen. You have your C N, and let's say we have water as a protic solvent. Well, your water is very polar, but even more so, your hydrogen is very partial positive. Okay. Very partial positive. More partial positive than anything that you would find in any of your aprotic solvents. And you have complexing. So this kind of the protic solvents tend to surround anions. You're going to find this a little bit hand wavy. Okay, we're trying to find an explanation for the data, and this is reasonable. Okay, because when we change from a protic to an aprotic solvent, we sort of liberate the cyanide for it to attack. Okay, for it to attack. Um, when you write the notes, just make sure you separate um, these two sections. Okay. This is an example, and. Uh, this was part of the comparison between SN1 and SN2. Right there. Okay. All right. Let us look at polar uh, protic to favor SN1 reactions. And let's pick up. A tertiary alkyl halide. Okay. By doing that, I'm trying to announce that we're likely going to do an SN1 reaction. And I know SN1 reactions typically happen with poor nucleophiles, but let me use again sodium cyanide and go ahead and draw the substitution product. Right, the substitution product is this, okay. and most likely because it's tertiary, it's going to go via SN1. Why do I know that? Because a, a tertiary carbocation is very stable, and you know that SN1 processes go through carbocation. Okay. 
Now, why does polar protic solvents favor? So this is what we're memorizing, and we're going to try to rationalize it. And maybe I shouldn't even say favor, I should say speed up. S1 mechanisms, S1 reactions. Again, we're going to need a protic, oh sorry, a polar to separate. So this is going to look a little strange because we said last time that we can't have it protic because the protic will, will surround the nucleophile. But honestly, we're not that concerned about it because it's a very subtle point. The RDS is the first step. It has nothing to do with the nucleophile. So the RDS is when leaving group leaves. So to affect the rate, the, to affect the change of this reaction, to affect the speed, I'm sorry, speed of this reaction, we're not really concerned about the nucleophile. We're concerned about the alkyl halide. By having a protic solvent, look what happens. You know that this bromine is partial negative. By having a protic solvent like water, for instance, that water is pulling. And by having a lot of protic solvents around this bromine, what are we doing? We are weakening this bond. And what is our result? We get to this intermediate faster. So I know, whoops, I know that protic solvents complex the anion, but again, that's not our main concern. Our main concern is how do we get to the carbocation faster? And by getting to the carbocation faster, we speed up the mechanism that goes to the carbocation. Okay, it's a little bit hand wavy, but ultimately, it's this that you want to remember. Polar A protic SN2, polar protic SN1, and maybe instead of saying favors, we're going to say speeds up. Speeds up. Um, again, this is mainly used as a tiebreaker. Mainly used as a tiebreaker. Okay. So, um, I have maybe two minutes to summarize, or at least to start to summarize, and we could complete this chart on a future video, on the next video. So SN2, we're going to compare bimolecular, unimolecular. Uh, SN2, nucleophile attacks and kicks out leaving group. For SN1, the nucleophile waits. Leaving group leaves on its own. Think about think about the cartoon. SN2, no carbocation ever. SN1, yes, you go through a carbocation. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Inversion of a chiral carbon scrambling. Okay. You'll look back at your notes and previous videos, see if all of this is correct. Okay. Next one. Primary alkyl halides. Fast. But for SN1, it's the tertiary alkyl halides that go fast, have a fast reaction. Okay. And then the last thing, there's, there's a couple more, but let me sum it up with uh, favored polar a protic. And for SN1, it's favored with polar protic. Okay. All right. Uh, we have one more video.
I'm going to sum it up a little bit more and take a look, look at a lot of examples, maybe three or four or five examples, to apply this table and to decide whether the ratio goes SN1 or SN2.